get a lot of questions about which computer people should buy. Should it get the MacBook Pro 16 inch or the MacBook Pro 13 inch? But the problem with that question is that all depends on what you're gonna use that computer for. So in this video, I'm gonna try my best to help you figure that out. Buying a new computer can be very expensive. I mean, we're talking about a lot of money here, especially if we're talking MacBooks. But as with all investments, you should try to make a solid decision based on what you know. And today, I'm gonna help you figure that out. Let's begin. Yo, my name is Tom, welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day here in Sweden. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to do a hashtag new sub so I can properly welcome you. By the way, it would really make my day if you can just smash that like button. You see, I'm competing with the big YouTubers out there, so I need all the help that I can get. Okay, so when it comes to recommending different computers, that's very difficult. It all depends on what you're gonna use it for. Now, when it comes to MacBooks, it's pretty simple, at least it is for me, and I wanted to offer you my perspective on how I look at these MacBooks. Now, I see basically three categories. We're not gonna go into like specs and upgrades. I'm just talking about the base models. So in 2020, we have three models. We have the MacBook Pro 16 inch, we have the MacBook Pro 13 inch, and we have the MacBook Air. Now, all of these MacBooks have the upgraded Magic Keyboard, which I think makes a lot of difference. If you would have asked me last year, I basically would not recommend the MacBook Pro 13 inch or the MacBook Air for that matter. I would only recommend the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And that's actually why I I got the MacBook Pro 16 inch. I made a review about it. If you want to check it out, I have a video where I answer most frequent questions and a couple of problems with the MacBook Pro. But in today's video, I wanted to talk about why this is not necessarily the best purchasing decision for everyone. Let's get started. So the 16 inch MacBook Pro that I own is a beast. I mean, if we're talking performance, like this thing rocks. The performance is so insane on this computer that it requires two fans and an upgraded cooling structure to really cool this computer down. They actually even made it a bit thicker. So if you want like top down best performance ever, this is the one to get. But I'm willing to bet that most people watching this video are basically wasting their money buying the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. Let me explain why. Most people don't use MacBooks to edit 4K projects or do 3D models. They use their computers to browse the web, watch YouTube videos like this one. And for that purpose, I think you're just wasting your money if you're getting this one. Plus the big size of this thing, I mean, it's got a pretty hefty width and it's like two kilograms, so it's heavy, it's big, it's thin, but I still believe that this is a very big computer to fit in your back pocket. And for that purpose, I would not recommend this if you plan to visit a lot of coffee shops, travel a lot, it's just not worth it. Now, if you're gonna game on it, then yes, technically speaking, the MacBook Pro 16 inch, it does have the CPU and the GPU to play some games, especially if you install Windows on it, which you can, in case you didn't know, but I personally, I would still get like a powerful PC laptop. You can get so much more bang for the buck. If you want to game a bit on your MacBook, then yeah, the MacBook Pro 16 inch will deliver. Now, I personally, I use this for heavy 4K editing. And when I say heavy 4K editing, I'm talking like 10 to 20 minutes long 4K videos for YouTube. So we're not talking like cinema performance and I use Final Cut Pro and this computer is basically designed to work brilliantly with Final Cut Pro. So why did I get the MacBook Pro 16 inch? Well, I will soon reveal why I would personally, if I was to get a new MacBook Pro today, I would get the MacBook Pro 13 inch, but I'll get into that in a sec. First of all, let me explain why I got the MacBook Pro 16 inch. The reason is I'm a minimalist and I want to have a computer that's good for everything for browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, making YouTube videos, and anything I would consider using a computer for. But unless you actually need that type of performance, that type of heavy 4K editing performance, you don't really need 
the MacBook Pro 16 inch, in my opinion. No, I would go with something more like the MacBook Pro 13 inch. This is my favorite Mac. This is my wife's computer, but I would definitely get this. If I was to pick a new MacBook Pro today, I would definitely get this one because it's light, it's portable, and it's got the cooling situation and the CPU to handle 4K editing. Now it doesn't have a dedicated GPU like the MacBook Pro 16 inch, but the Intel Iris processor is pretty good and it works well in 4K editing. You will perhaps notice a slight lag and your exporting times won't be as dramatic as on the MacBook Pro 16 inch, but I'm thinking, hey, if you want a more fluid timeline scrubbing experience, you can just set the Final Cut Pro to proxy mode and you'll basically notice no difference whatsoever. And when it comes to exporting time, we're basically talking 10 minutes exporting time on the MacBook Pro 16 inch versus 20 minutes exporting time on the MacBook Pro 13 inch. So my point is you're gonna wait either way. It's like 10 or 20 minutes. Do you really wanna pay that much extra so you don't have to wait a lot. Now, if you're looking for a workhorse, I still think that this is a good purchase. I really do. And I would get this in a heartbeat today. The reason why I didn't get this one is because when I was to buy a new MacBook Pro earlier this year, the MacBook Pro 13 inch had the butterfly keyboard. And I just, I couldn't bring myself to get the, the butterfly keyboard. It would have worked, but it just would have been such a downgrade. I just didn't want that. I wanted a regular keyboard like I had on my old, MacBook Pro 13 inch from late 2013. And that's what I got in the MacBook Pro 16 inch. But now today, if you get a MacBook Pro 13 inch, you get the magic keyboard as they call it. Makes sense, right? Now the 13 inch MacBook Pro only has two USB-C's. It doesn't have four USB-C's like the MacBook Pro 16 inch. But to be completely honest, those two extra USB-C's, they can kiss my now, for those of you who say that the MacBook Pro 13 inch is not good enough for 4K editing, you are wrong, Mr. and Mr. and Mrs. Because I've edited so much 4K projects on my old MacBook Pro 13 inch late 2013 model. It was a bit slow, but it did get the job done, especially when editing in proxy mode. Now, the MacBook Pro 13 inch does not have a dedicated GPU, but what it does have is actually a T2 chip, which actually helps it to render a H.265 video files. So if you're editing, say, 4K clips from a GoPro, you will notice that your MacBook Pro 13 inch handles it like a pro. Which is fitting because it's actually a pro model, but. So this is my personal favorite. This is what I would pick today. Not kidding. I'm not complaining about my MacBook Pro 16 inch, but this would have been a much more portable solution for me. Now, sure, the screen is smaller, but you know what? When you're, when you're sitting like this, you're pretty close to the screen and you really don't need to have that much screen real estate, in my personal opinion. Okay, now last but not least, the MacBook Air. Now, my wife, she used to own the 11-inch MacBook Air. Do you remember that one? That was portable as crazy. Today, the difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 13-inch, it's not that huge. It's a bit lighter, it's a bit thinner, but it's practically the same computer. Now, I don't have the MacBook Air here, but I did my homework. I have read a lot of tests. I've watched a lot of videos about the MacBook Air. Now, I recommend the YouTube channel Max Tech. They do awesome videos where they test computers like MacBook Pros versus MacBook Airs, where you can definitely see the performance on each computer. Now, the way I can tell is that the MacBook Air is lacking two things. One, a good cooling construction, which basically means that when you are exporting heavy 4K video files, it's gonna get really, really slow. That's what the computer does. In order to not overheat, it will clock down the CPU and it will take you a while to export 4K video files. The other thing that it lacks is the touch bar. And I gotta say, after spending a couple of months with the touch bar, I could personally live without it. It's a gimmick, doesn't really do that much. Honestly, I fell for it. I actually thought that I would be using the touch bar in Final Cut Pro. I didn't. It's not faster in any way. To be completely honest, I actually miss the function keys. So I'm actually saying that this is a plus on the MacBook Air because the MacBook Pro 13 inch and the MacBook 16 inch only have a touch bar option. Now, I really recommend the MacBook Air for like 90% of people watching this video. And the reason is most people use their MacBooks to browse the web and watch YouTube videos. 
forms and write emails and write letters and books, stuff that don't really require a maxed out MacBook Pro 16 inch computer. You know what I mean? So it's light, it's portable, definitely has the specs. There's nothing wrong with the specs on the MacBook Air, but it's the cooling situation that bothers me if you're gonna do a lot of 4K editing. And if you're just gonna edit like, you know, a 1080p video or just do an occasional 4K video edit, then yeah, I think the MacBook Air is probably sufficient. Again, I use the MacBook Pro 13 inch late 2013 for my 4K editing. I edited over thousands of videos on that machine. So the MacBook Air is definitely portable and is powerful enough to get the job done for most tasks. Now, some people will argue that if you just spend a little bit extra money, you can get the MacBook Pro 13 inch and get more performance. And I would agree to an extent, but don't forget also that if you add a couple of dollars, you can get extended storage. Instead of 256 gigabytes, you can get something like 512 gigabytes. So if that is important to you, maybe that's something to consider. Now, if we're talking prices, then come on. The MacBook Air is definitely the cheapest option out there. And I personally believe that the MacBook Air will give the most bang for the buck for most people watching this video. Honestly, guys, I think all MacBooks are good these days. That's what Apple does. They make products that work good for most tasks, except for gaming. That's the real Achilles heel on the MacBook Pros and the MacBook Airs. Other than that, I really think that either MacBook is good enough. Again, either you want something that, that's ultra portable, but I don't see a big difference between the MacBook Pro 13 inch and the MacBook Air. So either one of those is good. I would suggest that if you're gonna edit 4K videos, get the MacBook Pro 13 inch. But if you just want to browse the web and watch YouTube videos, get the MacBook Air. And the MacBook Pro 16 inch, who's that for? I would say for people who really need workhorses, machines that are capable of just spitting out 4K video after 4K video. That's what the MacBook Pro 16 inch is good for. Okay, that's all we had for today. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you could hit that like button to help me compete with the big boys on YouTube. Take care and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Oh, that's right, it's the behind the scenes. We're doing a behind the scenes after every video, every tech video, it's more like a personal vlog thing. So let's get going. I just wanted to give you a bit of an update. So I recently started working as a consultant at a new place. I've worked as a consultant for the last 10 years. And so I'm working at a new place and this workplace, it's in an area where there is a lot of seagulls. Okay, I live in the south of Sweden. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of, kind of terrified of seagulls. So the thing is, seagulls, they will put their nests all over the place. This is nesting season and they put their nests on top of buildings. And when you get close to the buildings, these seagulls, they just swoop down and attack you. Like, they don't actually attack you. I mean, I've heard of some cases where seagulls actually pick somebody in the head, but usually it's mostly that they just swoop down and just give you a big scare and just go like, wah, wah. You know, and um, it's really terrifying. I don't know if you've had any incidents with seagulls, but they can be really scary. This one day I was just going home from work and this big seagull just swooped down and just terrified me. And I just got into like this shock panic mode and I just started to run and I tripped and I fell and I hit my elbow and I hit, hit my knee, pants got ruined. Yeah, I'm basically terrified. But next week is gonna be different. I've got an umbrella with me and I'm just gonna walk around with this umbrella and I'm just gonna feel a bit safer. At least I hope this umbrella is gonna help, I don't know. Anyway, what else? I know that a lot of people are interested in my weight issues, as you probably heard before. I have some weight issues. So what am I doing about that? Well, I'll tell you, I'm using this little app on my smartphone. It's called LifeSum, if you haven't heard of it. It's this brilliant little app where you basically just count calories. I was kind of inspired by Matt Diavella, another YouTuber who recently, or recently, it was actually quite a while ago, he made a video how he counted calories for the last 30 days. Um, I'm interested to doing something similar. I just wanna make sure that I don't overeat 
everything that I eat, I just put it in the app and the app lets me know how much it is. And at the end of the day, I see how many calories I've eaten basically. And it's also connected to the health app on the iPhone. So it measures how much I walk. I usually don't exercise. I just walk. If there's any exercise I do, it's just walking. I'm a walker, not a runner, hate running, but walking. Yeah, I could, I could walk for hours. So this app seems really cool. And I love like, you can like scan the barcodes of products. And so far it's found every product I've shown. You can measure stuff and then, you know, put in how many grams or ounces or whatever you want to use. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I want to see how this month unfolds. I I'm sort of, you know, I'm not counting on losing like a lot of weight in, in a month or so, but I just want to see how much I'm eating in a month and what I should stay away from. You know, like I'm actually quite surprised just a just a piece of bread, how much calories is in a piece of bread. And it's like mind boggling. Some sauces that I've used that I didn't think had any calories they have a lot of calories and it's just it's just nuts so it's a fun thing it's a fun little project we'll see how it goes anyway if you have any tips for me how i can lose weight put it in the comment section below i love it and by the way i am super grateful for all new subscribers all the comments all the love like people are genuinely kind to me on this channel i don't know why but uh, it, it feels Great, really it does. So thank you so much for watching my videos and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care.